and welcome to our presentation on business growth with the right tech. And just a spoiler alert, jCurve ERP is the right tech. Sitting next to me is Mandy, an amazingly talented solutions consultant who will guide us through this uh, presentation. She has been the architect behind hundreds of successful implementations, so she brings plenty of experience, years of best practice. And I'm Nigel. I don't have a really long rap sheet yet, so I'll just claim to be JCurve's best looking business development manager. Look, our focus here is really about showing you how we can deliver real-time visibility of your business, enabling you to understand your customers, your business, from a single source of truth. Hopefully, you will see how we can simplify and streamline your processes largely through NetSuite's ability to automate much of what you do. If you haven't used Zoom before, there are some buttons at the bottom of your screen that you can use to adjust things. Uh, there is a raise your hand function, so if you require us to slow down, please press that and we'll slow down a little bit. Um, and at the end, we'll get through as many of your questions as we possibly can. The benefits of, the benefits of J-Curve start immediately. And the benefits don't just hit the obvious things like making more money from sales or increasing liquidity from reducing inventory. There is also the less sexy stuff like reducing IT costs and getting rid of all those blue cables in your, in your business at the moment. Jayco VIP is positioned to give small business access to the most powerful cloud-based ERP system in the world and really level the playing field when competing against the big multinationals. Because guess what? Many of those guys are using NetSuite as well. Now, I don't want you to lose interest, so I won't stay on this slide for very long. But JCurve is a big deal. We are NetSuite's largest Australian partner, so we bring to the table implementation ex expertise, best practice, tried and tested local support. We are a really good partner to have. And we are the exclusive provider for NetSuite's small business edition, JCurve ERP. And did I mention the well over 500 JCurve ERP partners on our books? I think we're getting pretty close to 600 soon, so just watch this space. One of our most recent success stories is Emma and Tom. Some of you may be drinking their juices right now. Um, and they have achieved 30% year on year growth. Uh, we have stepped through this journey with them and we've learned a lot from those, from those guys. And uh, hopefully we've empowered them to continue that 30% year on year growth as well. So let's dig into the product and we'll flick it over to, the man, flick it over to Mandy and uh, really discuss and look at what JCurve ERP can do. So Mandy, I hear that uh, NetSuite is a completely cloud-based solution. That's right, Nigel. So NetSuite is a completely cloud-based solution. It allows you to securely access your data anytime, anywhere, in any device. All you need is internet. You're able to use any browser, either a Mac or PC. NetSuite also provides you a free mobile app so you can do things daily through your mobile phone. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into this demo account. So Manny, that would kind of mean that um, whenever I'm looking at NetSuite, no matter where I am in the world, I can always get access to my business. That's right. Yeah, okay. So I've noticed that if you're logged in, that you're logged in there at the top as a financial controller, Mandy. So can you tell me a bit about the roles? Yeah, sure. So NetSuite is a role-based system. So roles are part of our security infrastructure. It helps dictate what screens users can access, what data they see, and what they can do. Uh, when they log into the system. So this is just a sample of the roles that I've set up in the system. Um, but remember that you can define the roles yourself and you can assign permissions to the roles. So you can determine what each user will be doing in your organization. Right, yeah, because I've noticed there that as a financial controller, for instance, you can see how much money is in the bank. That's now, right. if, if I'm in there as a salesperson, I probably don't really need to be seeing that. And I'm sure that the owner probably doesn't want me seeing that. Exactly. So I can set permissions to stop them from seeing that sort of that sort of information. Yeah, that's right. Oh, great. Okay. Now, also, I've noticed there's all these boxes. So I, I believe you used a word before called portlets. Is that right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Can you tell us about those portlets and what sort of information I can put in them? So NetSuite provide each user with a dashboard that they can personalize. Um, and you can see if I click on this personalized button, those are all the portlet I can insert it into my dashboard. So, so if I want to put a calendar in there, um, I can just drop a calendar down there? That's right. And you can also drag it and through. Then, oh, okay. And so I can just change the view and look at the different people's calendars that I need that are in my organization. That's right. And then I can just take it back out if it's not necessary. 
Exactly. Okay. Now also on those portlets there, I noticed that you, every time you scroll over something, your little arrow turns into a hand. So if I click on that $5 million worth of accounts payable information there, what, what, where will that take me? So it will take you to the report that shows you exactly what make up that $5,000. So you can see I drill down into this account payable report and it shows me the account payable for each of the customer or the, for the vendors or for the employees. So if I want to click on one of the, the total balances at the end there of uh, looks like you're highlighting $100,000 one, if you want to click on that for Colliers, that's going to take me through to each individual bill or each that's individual right. invoice. Yeah, that's right. So from the one, basically from the one line of information at the top, what you're saying is I can drill right down through to the transaction that makes that information up. That's right, exactly. Great, okay. Let's have a look at that dashboard again, Mandy. Now, I've also noticed there's lots of different colours on the dashboard, Mandy. There's like greens and reds, um, and even down, I can see a bit further down, there's a KPI meter that's got yellow in it. Can you tell us a bit about the colours? Yeah, so this allows you to manage your business by exceptions, and it tells you straight away when you log into the system what's going well and what is not going well. So many of the people I notice that we talk to, Mandy, often talk about, you know what, when I come into work, I don't really know what I need to be looking at. Like I've got all these things and what I do now is I just work down a to-do list. Mm -hmm. uh, but having this, it, it really allows me to focus on the things that, uh, that I guess are important. So I'm not really worried about, you know, if I'm looking down here, my current ratio or inventory turnover, but I probably should be pretty concerned about my profit margin on sales. That's right. So you can click into that and see exactly what is not doing well in your organization. Okay, that sounds really good. Now, what about the different ways I can display information? I notice you've got that KPI meter down the bottom there. Is there any other graphical information that I might want to be able to see? Yeah, so you can see that's the KPI meter, but if, it's, if I scroll down, I also have this trend graphic. And um, this is, I'm looking at my revenue, um, my revenue trend, but I can look at different ways. So I could look at the trend and uh, I can do a comparison trend as well. So I can really tell if my business is going in the right direction. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. So Mandy, I noticed up there in the reminders, it says there's 243 sales orders that I need to invoice. So are you telling me that when, when a salesperson is out in the field, puts an order into the system, that that information is gonna show up on that, on that reminders dashboard there straight away? Yeah, that's right. So it's all live and real time. Anytime they save a sales order, it shows up straight away. So no matter where my salesperson is? That's right, yeah. So Manny, the search bar at the top, I believe that's very much, I think next week call that a global search, is that correct? Yes. So what sort of records can I find using that global search bar? You can find every single record in the system, including contact, customer, items, anything you can think of. Okay, so if a customer rings me up and his name was, let's say, Tim Smith. Yeah, so I just need to type in the, the customer's name and then it pops up straight away. So it's, it's a Tim Smith, it's a contact. And Tim works for Osnet Radio, okay. That's right. Now, what if I just had a phone number that was written down, like, I think, 0425 So you just type it in. What if there was a, an inventory item or something I was looking for? Like if I, had a, if I was selling a Samsung phone or something. So it's a sign you just type in the keyword and you can see all the items, all the records includes that Samsung as a keyword pops up. So I'm gonna drill down into this Samsung Galaxy Note and show you guys more about the inventory side of the item. So you can actually personalize or customize the form so this is the form that I customized that include all the information I captured, but you can create as many fields as you like. So if I want to capture the length, the depth, the heights, measurements, weights, any of that type of information, I can capture that in here as well? That's right. And you, you just, just change the form? That's right. You just add, add those fields in and there's no limitation on how many fields you want to add it into the form. Okay. And I've noticed there's some pictures in there. What can I do with those pictures? So those pictures can be tied back to your quotes or your sales order and sent back to your customer. So if I want to have a really nice graphical invoice with pictures of the products that we're selling, we can do that through Jayco. That's right. Excellent. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, I've noticed on there we've, we can now start talking about the way we can manage our inventory. Mm -hmm. So in this first little items cost details tab there, can you tell us about some of the information that's captured in here? 
so yeah, so NetSuite allows you to track your landed cost. So if there's any threat cost or duty cost occurred when you receive your purchase order, those costs can be tracked. Um, for the costing method, NetSuite gave you the option, but most of customers are using the average costing. Okay, and I noticed on the right hand side there, it talks about drop ships, so we can enable drop ship items as well. That's right. Okay, excellent. Um, and a bit further down, we can talk about managing your inventory. So I can see you can use bins. Mm -hmm. So that means I can actually add bin locations to the mm -hmm. system. Correct, okay. Um, and there's all these auto calculate things there. I noticed there that it looks like I can auto calculate my preferred stock levels, lead time, safety stocks, seasonal demand, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm assuming what that means is that I can set this up to say, I want to hold, let's say 20 days worth of stock or five days worth of stock on a fast moving item. Mm -hmm. And that will just dynamically adjust how much stock I should be holding in the system. Is that correct? That's right. And you can just set that to auto calculate. So it auto calculates the first stock level. And I've noticed there's a little sign here that says days based on how many days of stock you want to hold. Is that correct? That's right. So if I had a fast moving part, I might only want to hold five or six days worth of stock. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if I had slow moving stock, I might want to, you know, pull it out to say six months so I can round up to get at least one of those in stock. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then instead of me making a stock order, what's going to happen here is that this is going to suggest an order for you. And all I've got to go do is go through it and just make sure I'm happy with what's being ordered. That's right. Well, that gives us really good ability to be able to control our stock levels about the CRM side? So what about how I can look at all the different people that have bought this particular product and how does CRM start to weave through NetSuite? Yeah, so you can see we are in the item record. If I go to the related records, I can see all the transactions that related to this particular inventory item. So I can see everyone who has made the order to this particular item. So in here, I could see all the orders that I've made. I could see all the people that have bought this product. Um, I get a real 360 degree view of this item and the information related to it. Is that right? That's right. And what about for the customer? Can I do similar things for the customer as well? Yes, of course. So what I can do now is show you the transactions um, of this particular item and we can drill down into some of the customers who have bought this item in the past. So if I select the sales order transaction types, I'm only worried about like all the sales orders. You can see my list has been filtered to see all the sales orders and it allows me to drill down into a particular sales order. So in this example, you can see this is a sales order for Osnet Redo who has made, um, who has spent three, $325 and it allows me to drill down into the customer as well. Okay, so now you've taken this into Osnet Radio. So for CRM purposes, let's maybe just slow this down and take a step back. If I wanted to see a dashboard of this customer and, and talk about what sort of customer this guy's been, can you show me a dashboard? Yes, of course. So you can see on the top right corner, there is a view dashboard link. And then I can drill down into that to see the customer dashboard. So the dashboard that, that's here that's about to show up on this screen, has that been created by jCurve or is that something I can... Um, you can personalize personalize it. myself That's okay right. so i can see the sales i can see the forecast all this information i've got here uh, i can actually tell what sort of customer this guy has been so i can look at how quickly he pays his bills you know average days to overdue all that information so if he rings me up and says look i've got a return for thousand dollars i've got a little bit of extra information of how i mm -hmm. want to treat him so can i see all the all the different things that this customer's bought yes of course so if i go to the sales if I go to, from this sales tab, you can see all the opportunities you have created for this customer. Yeah. If I go to all the transactions, it allows you to see to all the transactions. Um, so you can see currency as set filter to see the invoices. Mm -hmm. So this will bring up all the invoices over a given period. That's right. And you can also change to see the other transaction type as you like. So you, you might want to see all the sales orders. And so once I've got the information up, obviously then when, when um, someone, you know, uh, Tim Smith from Osnet gives me a call and says, look, I need to get that invoice from whatever purchase I made, it's quite easy to find. That's right. Yeah, okay. And I, also I can see the total value of a customer really, really quickly and really easily. Mm -hmm. So I can see all these items purchased, I can see any returns he's made, I can see all the sales orders he's put in there, I can see what he's waiting on as well, mm -hmm. all from the one screen. That's right. Okay, really good. 
Um, and if I want to add people to Osnet Radio, or if I want to, is, is that easy to do as well? Yeah, so you go to the relationships. These are all the contacts you can assign to this particular customer. And those contacts can either be with Osnet Radio and can be external contact. Okay. As well. So what if Osnet, what if I've got customers who are, have a parent child relationship with other businesses? Can I, can I set up parent child? Yes, of course. So you can see in here, I set it up to a child customer under Osnet Radio. Okay. And so if Osnet Radio is the national head and I've got Osnet Radio in Sydney, but there's four different offices in Sydney, can Osnet Radio Sydney office also have children underneath it? Yes, of course. And I can set that up so that products will get sent to the, the child and then the bill will go to the parent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. So you can see under the communication tab, yeah. we tracked all the communication, including emails, activities, um, files, and any user notes you want to assign. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm looking at here, what sort of information have I, have I got here? So this is all the invoice con and order confirmations that I've got that's been automatically tracked by the system. That's right. So these are all the emails we send out from the system but any customer's reply will also be captured here as well. So the reply comes back into the same That's spot. right, straight away. Excellent. And so if I look into activities, what sort of information is going to be captured in the activities section then? So any activities, including... Um, Follow-up of invoices. Phone calls, okay. Including phone calls, events, meetings, or tasks. So if I'm in accounts receivable and I'm ringing them up, all that information is going to be stored here so that I know the last time if they said they're going to pay on the 30th of the month and now it's the 1st and they say oh, I'll pay in 15 days, I can say, well, hold on. Mm -hmm. I've got that information yeah. right there. Great. Um, and files, what sort of information can I put under the files? So any file you want to attach to this customer, also the case customers, you would have some price agreement with the customer and that contract can be attached to this customer record. Oh, okay, so if, they've got, if, if they want to set up an account with us with like $5,000 worth of, mm. you know, that they can invoice out before they have to pay the bill or mm -hmm. things like that, we can set that up in here. Yep. That's excellent. All right, and so what about marketing? I noticed there's a marketing tab there. What sort of information can we track with marketing? The marketing is part of Jacob ERP's CRM module. It allows you to send out marketing campaigns to your customer, to your targeted customers. So there's many people out there, many, that want to start tracking their return on investment when they spend all this money on these marketing campaigns. Can you tell me how some of that information feeds back into the system? Yes, of course. So if any customer or any prospect opens up the email, any clicks through will be tracked within the system. So if they ended up um, purchasing any product, or um, they ended up become a lead or prospect, those will all be tracked um, within the system. So I can really start to find out how valuable and how well my email campaigns are doing. Mm -hmm. yes. Excellent, okay. Um, and what if one of the customers rings, you know, says, no, I'm not happy, I don't wanna hear see these emails anymore and clicks unsubscribe, will that come through? Yes, of course. So you can see there's a subscri subscription tab that, um, any subscription from the customer will be updated. So Mandy, from what you're saying, this sounds like I can see if people have opened my emails. Mm -hmm. I can understand what they've bought and purchased off me. I can see their returns. Um, it, it seems to be a very well-rounded CRM program. Would you agree? That's right. Okay. What about support cases? If people have got, you know, for those people out there that offer warranty and so forth, mm -hmm. is that that's supported as well. That's right. So um, the customer can actually send out email to the support email box, which will be captured as a support case and can be routed to the, the best available resources to work on the support case for the customer. So I can create rules that say, come in and say, look, if it's a delivery issue, that gets, re you know, that gets sent off to Larry. Mm -hmm. But if it's, you know, a product default, that goes to Ray Ray. That's right. Oh, excellent. So that CRM really is rounded, isn't it? It's, it covers all the aspects of the business. Mm -hmm. def definitely a wholesale and distribution business. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So Mandy, we, it's probably one of the things that we need to move into now is just a bit more important because going through this marketing stuff and, and talking about ROI and different things like that, it's making me think a little bit about reporting. So I understand there's a large number of standard reports that NetSuite comes in. Do you want to show us some of the reports that are standard within the NetSuite or yes. Jacob VIP uh, version of NetSuite? Yeah, that's 
Yes, of course. So you can see that we have a reports tab. If I click into the reports overview, it shows me all the reports available in the system. So you can drill down into any particular area to see all the reports available. So common ones like a profit and loss report, is that something there that you can pull up pretty quickly? Yes, of course. So it's under the financial and you can see the top one here. So I can just click into that to drill down into the profit and loss report. Excellent. Now that's a fairly standard report. Is there any way that I can, you know, change that and make it look by department or, you know, a category of product or something like that? Is there any way I can change that report? Yes, of course. So you can see on the bottom, there's a column field and you can break it out by department, by locations or by the cost centers that you have defined. So if I click onto the department, if I do a refresh on the report, the report will be broken out by department. Okay, so now that's out there by, by department, so I can see that across. So if I wanted to cut this report down and say give it to my sales manager uh, and just give him the things that are reflective, you know, the, the, the expenses that, he, that are from his department and the rents that he pays in his department, can I do a customised version of mm -hmm. this report? Yes, of course. So all you need to do is click on this customise button and then you are in this customised uh, report builder, yep. which allows you to customise your report. So if I just want to add something like, uh, let's just say foreign currency. So you go to your columns yep. and you just do simply search on your on the fields you want to add it in. You'll figure out how to spell it. There we go. So you can see all the fields available can be added in. And you can see I just added in as an additional column here. Yep. So there's my foreign currency. And can I preview that somehow? Yes, of course. Now, if I like this report and I like the way that, like, you know, it looks and this is a report that I want to use all the time, can I, you know, save this report mm -hmm. and then make it available to other people or what, what, what are my options there? Yeah, so you can see you can give it another name. Okay. Like if it's in your report, you just give it another name and then you go to your more options where you can share it with a particular role or a particular employee if you like. Okay, excellent. Now, if I want to send this report out and schedule that report to do certain time frames, or if I want to send it out via a PDF file or something like that, can I do that? Yes, of course. So you can see on the bottom, you have those options available. Yeah. And you can export it into different format, or you can schedule it, or email it out, email to, somebody. It out to someone excellent. you like. Okay. So many of that reporting functionality looks really robust and uh, it looks very customizable and easy to use. So we've talked a lot about reporting now. We've talked a bit about, you know, the dashboards and, and the new information they can get in the dashboards that really can help them do their job. Um, we've talked about managing by exception, which I know is just a buzzword around the, the business world right now. Inventory management, we've talked about how we can lower their inventory, increase their, their, their liquidity of their, their, of their cash reserves, um, and CRM and how their customers are doing what they're doing and how they're doing that. So, Mandy, I think that we've given you know, a, a really clear example of how businesses out there can grow fast using technology and how we can support them along that way. But is there anything else you think we need to cover off before we hand it over for some questions? No, Nigel, I think we have covered everything. I do too, Mandy. Um, great work, by the way. Any questions out there, guys? So the first question we've got here um, is about users. So yes, there are, we can handle 20 users on JCurve. And remember, uh, if you are a registered accountant, you can also get an extra user. So um, we can register your account to get an extra one as well. Uh, and that's provided for free. Yes, so uh, the another question is integration with orders coming through a website. So we can integrate uh, with many websites, so it just depends on what sort of integration partner you wish to use. Uh, but yes, we can integrate with websites, we can receive orders, we can pass through stock availability um, and all that kind of stuff as well. So you can have a completely, well, a full um, e-commerce site up and running. Does JCurve ERP do BAS reporting? Uh, correct, we do. Um, so that will automatically um, fill out a BAS report for you uh, and put all the figures in there and, into, and fill it out. All you've got to do is print that off and send it off to, your, to the local government agency. Uh, does the system handle foreign currency? Uh, yes, we do multiple currencies. I think 
there's around 160 currencies we deal with. So if you uh, have, a, have a business in Yemen, we probably don't deal with Yemeni dollars. Um, but, you know, most major currencies we've got no issues with. So can we see invoicing? Um, how about we just send through a sample of some invoicing? Voices for you. That's probably a fairly lengthy thing, but yeah, we, we can see it, but I'll just send you through some information on that. So another person's asked, do we sell in packages instead of individual items? Uh, how can this be handled? Look, there's probably a number of ways we can do that. We can do kits, we can do assemblies. Um, I'd just assume, just maybe drop, write me an email or, or, or just further flesh out that question a bit more and we can answer that. But yeah, we can do kits of items and we can do assemblies and all sorts of things as well. So um, we also deal in matrix items too. So for those of you who are worrying about, you know, one item that comes in different sizes and colors, we handle that. We can serialize um, and we can batch track as well. Does the system generate an ABA file? Uh, correct, it does. Um, we can do an ABA file, which you can send off to your local bank. Uh, bank feeds. Uh, so yes, we can handle uh, bank feeds. We can do automatic ones as well. So look, the easiest way to do it at the moment is, is if you just input your bank file uh, and then you can sit there and match that off and we can create rules around that. However, if you want some deeper integrated stuff, we do use third parties that will automate a bank feed for you as well. So you can get that in live in real time. There's, there is a few more questions, but we're probably running out of time. Um, but we'll get back to you with anything else that we need to do. I really thank you. And we'll also answer your questions by email. Thanks for, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us and we'll talk to you again soon.